EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. What the heck does that mean? An EBITDA is important when exploring a franchise, but it is definitely not everything. I often work with candidates who are trying to figure out if they can afford to quit their job and jump in and start their franchise business as full-time owners. But the answer to that really depends on how quickly will the business cash flow and what kind of money can they make from a franchise business. When I have a candidate in this situation, their thoughts often become super focused on the EBITDA of the business trying to figure out with certainty and clarity exactly how much money they can make from this business so that they can confidently leave their job and jump into the business. In this video, I want to explain why that approach is a little bit dangerous, unrealistic, and really not necessary. Sometimes franchisors, when making an earnings claim, will show the EBITDA of the business, meaning all of the expenses that come off of the gross revenue minus the taxes that the owner has to pay himself. It's an unrealistic expectation, however, that you can walk away from the validation process of exploring a franchise and know with certainty and clarity exactly what the net margin of a business is going to be. The reason it's unrealistic is because you are the biggest determining factor in your success in your business. So when you're trying to use things external to you to validate a net margin, it doesn't work. Because there are so many variables that only you can control in your market, things like the real estate costs, things like the timing of the year when you start your business that might impact your business, to if there's like a pre-grand opening sales event and we don't know how that's gonna turn out for you, there are all these variables that can't really be controlled before you say yes. And I get nervous for my candidates who are only going to quit their job if and when they can produce a pro forma on paper that matches what they need in order to confidently leave the job. As the franchise consultant, I would caution people away from that line of thinking and instead empowering them with a better approach. This better approach is something that I call the daily plan. So what is the daily plan exactly? The daily plan gets the owner focused on exactly what drives the greatest result in a business. So rather than getting hyper-focused on a revenue number, which in and of itself doesn't tell you what owners are waking up and doing, how hard they're working to produce that number on the page, how many hours a day they have to put into the business to produce that financial result, when you understand what owners are waking up and doing, what skills are necessary to drive those numbers on a page, you have infinitely more information that's going to help you decide if this is the right business for you. In this daily plan, I want to understand what is the revenue goal that you want to achieve. I want you to validate with franchise owners, some of the top performing franchise owners in a system to understand if the number that you're thinking is like a home run or if it's a first base hit. Even if it is a home run and nobody in the system is producing the revenue that you want today, it doesn't mean it can't be done. It just means it hasn't been done and you get to be the first one to do it. So once you validate with top performing owners to really understand where is the home run versus the first base hit in first year gross revenue, then I want you to understand what is the average client pay you? So if we can take what an average client pays you and we can divide that by the annual gross revenue, then we can figure out exactly how many unique customers you're going to need in a year to make that kind of money. 
So let's say that you have a million dollar goal. You want to build a seven figure business in your first year. Why the heck not? <laughs> now let's say that the average ticket of what you're selling is $5,000 just to keep it easy math. So very quickly, we know that you need 250 unique customers to have that million dollar business. And if you're my candidate, I'm going to coach you to plan your first year around 48 weeks, meaning that I want you to take four weeks of vacation, even from year one. Many people worry about finding work-life balance when they start a business, but I'm telling you, the people who don't have work-life balance, it's because they're not disciplined in their plans and in their thinking. If you follow the plan, this daily plan that I'm presenting to you, you will always have work-life balance. And more importantly, you're going to know with clarity exactly what you have to accomplish every day that you come to work. And this is what's going to enable you to have that seven figure business anytime or bigger anytime that you want it. So you have this million dollar goal. We have a $5,000 average ticket. So we need 250 customers. I'm going to ask you to take four weeks of vacation a year. In most businesses, you can disappear certain weeks of the year and it will have zero impact on your business. For example, think about the week of Thanksgiving. There's an easy week for most businesses. Think about the week between Christmas and New Year's. For some businesses, these are the busy times. They might not be the right weeks, but for a lot of businesses, I'll coach people to the week of Thanksgiving, the week between Christmas and New Year's, a spring vacation, and a summer vacation. That enables you as the owner from year one to never feel enslaved to what you've built. You're building a business for freedom, for control, to have that improved quality of life. So if you want to have that improved quality of life, you must be disciplined to take the time away from your business. So now we have five days a week, and we have 48 weeks, so 48 times five is 240 work days. So in my million dollar plan where the average ticket was 5,000, we needed 250 sales, and now we have 240 days in which to accomplish those 250 sales. Do you see what I've done? I've made it very easy, clear, specific, like, it's so simple. Why doesn't everybody have a million dollar business then? If all I have to do is sell one thing every day that I come to work and that average ticket has to be $5,000, then at the end of the year, I have a million dollar business. This daily plan allows owners to come to work to accomplish only what they must accomplish on that one day. Now, the next question I want you to ask to these top performing franchise owners is if this is a sales process, what is their average closing ratio, right? So if I want that one sale for $5,000, how many potential clients do I need to get in front of in order to statistically land that one sale? So let's say that they say the closing ratio on average is around 50%. So that means that I need to go on two sales calls, Every day that I come to work, I need to close one of them and I need what I'm selling on average to be around $5,000. If you were to use this methodology, you would never have to worry about that big million dollar goal that seems so evasive, that makes most business owners feel like it's so impossible. This is a pretty simple plan, isn't it? It shows how possible a seven figure business is in this fictitious scenario. But here's the thing, for almost all of the businesses that I've built this daily plan for, it almost always comes down to one new customer per day. So then it begs the question, well, if it's that easy, Kim, why doesn't everybody have a business the size that they want? Well, because it's not always easy to stay focused on the plan, right? Sometimes you get so much momentum going in your business it becomes easy to lose focus of that prospecting, of the sales pro process, right? If you have customer complaints or employee issues or other things that you have to react to as a business owner, it can be very easy to lose sight of what's most important, which is waking up and driving that activity. Inevitably, when I talk to owners who have businesses that they don't feel in control of, that they're not happy that they are the owner of, 
and I ask them, hey, so what is your revenue goal or what is your average client paying you or what, what is your closing ratio today? They don't have the answers on the tip of their tongue. And when they don't have the answer on the tip of their tongue, I know that no matter what they're frustrated about or why they are unhappy with their business, probably the number one reason they're unhappy is because they are reacting to their business every day instead of coming to work empowered to proactively drive what they can control. And all of this comes back to why validating an EBITDA, it's so small in comparison to what I'm teaching you to do because the numbers on a page are just numbers on a page. They don't mean anything. But when you're validating with franchise owners real information like this so that you can build a simple plan for yourself that helps you understand if you want to have a $2 million business, you need to double your numbers or a $3 million business, triple your numbers. But it gives you with clarity exactly how you have to perform in order to produce the numbers. It allows you to say yes a lot more confidently than just looking at a perfect pro forma numbers on a page that you have no understanding of what you're going to be waking up and doing. Now, the thing about closing ratios, or sometimes if you have a reoccurring revenue business, it's not about the closing ratio, it's about the retention rate. But closing ratios and retention rates are owned by the owner. They can be controlled through a better sales process, setting up objections so that they don't come up, helping customers move past their own objections to increase that closing ratio, or the retention rate can be increased through a better customer experience, which is ultimately, again, owned by each franchise owner. So if you're validating closing ratios or retention rates, and you're hearing numbers where owners seem to be working really, really hard, this is another way to know whether you're talking to a top performing owner because top performing owners are going to be working to perfect that closing ratio, to bring that closing ratio down. It's called working smarter rather than harder. Look, when you first start your business, I want you to just go out and take massive imperfect action. I don't care if your closing ratio is one out of five in the beginning, but you can't stay there. You can't rest there. You're going to be working too hard. You're going to have to go through way too many leads to get to your buyer. But the sad thing is that many owners, this is what they do. They just come to work every day. They repeat what they're doing. They never look to improve. And you know, typically those are the owners that never really have a business that they love or that would say, if I could do it over again, I don't know if I would. It's not necessarily a function of the franchise or the toolbox or the plan. It's a function of their plan or their focus to their plan. I hope this is making sense to you. There's so much more that goes into creating this daily plan that I would love the opportunity to explore with you. If you are exploring a franchise and you're trying to break down the earnings potential and you now fully understand why validating net margins or EBITDAs really is a waste of your time, but you want more clarity with this daily plan, I would love to offer you some time because this one thing will help advance your learning curve more than anything else that you do during your franchise due diligence process. I know how to do this because I'm the inventor of the daily plan. I was the first one to use this plan, to create a history making business, to replicate what I do so that there's a science to what I do that I can teach other people. And now I want to offer that daily plan to you, to every candidate that I am blessed to help because I want to create millionaires. It's a millionaire mindset that I'm going for and I want to coach you to that. I don't care if there are no other franchisees in the system that you're currently looking at that have this mindset, that have big business, it doesn't mean that it's not possible for you. If you are interested in learning more about the daily plan and how I can coach you to that million dollar or multi-million dollar mindset, 
I would love the opportunity to meet you. Please leave a comment below or reach directly out to The Daily Coach. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more just like it, please like and subscribe.